I think something like less than 10% mm-hmm. of the UK uh-huh. teaching force is young black female teachers. Yes. 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 Even then, maybe go like, mm. <laughs> No, I've never been taught by a yeah. woman in my life. Like, everything just started clicking. Mm-hmm. Like, the kids, the day, I was enjoying, like, reading the job specs, the training didn't seem too bad. Even when I spoke to people, it was like, if I know that someone's stuck and they, you can see it, I'm going to be upset. And I'm thinking, like, well, what can I do to, like, help them? Because you went for purpose. Because, you know, as an accountant, you're probably making a lot more than as a teacher. Yeah. You decided to go for purpose, which is very yeah. interesting. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. In this video, I have the wonderful Miss Williams, who is an amazing teacher, maths teacher based in London. So therefore, she is an original, official, authentic and wonderful STEM babe. OK, would you like to introduce yourself, Miss Williams? Yeah, sure. So my name's Tim Real Williams, as Yem said. And right now I'm in a mid state school based in London and I'm also going to uni as well on the side just to, you know, get extra degrees, you know, being, you know, I'm joking now, but, <laughs> but yeah, so as well as being a teacher, I'm also a student. Oh, wow. I never knew you were a student. Are you doing a master's? Yeah. <laughs> Not masters, basically, it's like an extra sort of teaching qualification. So, like, wow. when I get this, I'll wow. be able to teach basically, like, anywhere. Oh, wow. So, you're thinking of studying ab- abroad and stuff? Yeah. So, um, that's, been in the, that's been in the talks, like, studying in, like, Shanghai and wow. Singapore, Dubai, all these places. Wow. So, it's like, after this, I can actually, like, you know, pop off, think about where I'm going to go with it. That is so exciting. <laughs> my train of thought because I wasn't expecting that. But anyway, um, back to the original questions. But that's a really good. I'm really excited for you. Thank you for mentioning Thanks. that. So the first question that I wanted to ask you is: Why did you decide to become a maths teacher and not something else? Especially as maths degree, <laughs> you lot are. You could work in finance. You could work. Yeah in technology you could work anywhere and everywhere really so yeah. why maths teacher so it's funny because i originally like wanted to be an accountant like financial management accountant and it just got to a point where i wouldn't the, my all my applications would get rejected mm. i wouldn't get no so it was like getting really like disheartening and it was like i don't i don't want to do this <laughs> anymore so then i started like working a retail job and everything so there was like a nice little shop near my house mm-hmm. and I really enjoyed it, but then it got to a point where my managers were asking like we really want you to do this management course that the company was doing yeah because they saw yeah. that like I was enjoying it I actually was but you know like when you're saying like yeah yeah it sounds good sounds fun but you're like but this isn't what like I actually want to do I, like, I always had it myself like I wanted my degree my degree I wanted to just basically like just not mm-hmm. be tied down to a shop mm-hmm. basically mm-hmm. so like most of my career background is as well is retail mm-hmm. so it wasn't that I knew that I couldn't do it it's just do I actually want to do it mm-hmm. so you know what let me take some time and actually just just get my mind on all of reflect and actually like start building blocks for me to actually like make a career so yeah. I even left London for yeah. like a week and everything mm-hmm. so I reflected on like three things it was <clears throat> oh sorry it was what do I enjoy what can I use my degree for and also what can make me money <laughs> if I'm being honest right <laughs> no but you know like I'm really expensive like <laughs> yeah. yeah so yes yeah, so like in that time, I done my research. I kept thinking, like the times when I tell like my math teacher when I was in school, like, yeah, I'm gonna be a teacher. I was saying that as a joke, but wow. the tongue, the tongue is really wow. powerful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'll be telling them like, yeah, I'm gonna be like you, whatever. My mom, she always tell me like, oh, Tia, you're so good with kids, children, you're so patient. Like, why don't you consider 
doing like something with kids mm -hmm. if I can't even work but you know like when you're younger you're like no 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 I can't it will work I can't it will work but yeah. it's time yeah. literally all that kept going through my head mm -hmm. so I literally looked into it and it's like everything just started clicking mm -hmm. like kids the day I was enjoying like reading the job specs the training didn't seem too bad even when I spoke to people I was like this is the most intense year like your first year however after that it's literally like if you can do that year you can literally do your career yeah. so everything just looked very general so what I done was I even communicated with like people closest to me and looked up stats and everything and I think something like less than I think something like less than 10% mm -hmm. of the UK uh -huh. teaching force is young black female teachers yes, yeah. yes. even then made me go like mm. <laughs> you know what I mean like so that's what made me do it as well like there's really no representation out here no I've never been taught by a <laughs> woman in my life Exactly, and the only one that I did was like much more older. So I literally think to myself, like, you know what? Like, if I can change something, let me do it. And if I could do it whilst I'm enjoying it, let me do it. So that's literally what what fueled me to do this career. That's incredible because you went for purpose. Because you know, as an accountant, you're probably making a lot more than as a teacher. Yeah. You decided to go for purpose which is very yeah. interesting um, yeah. and like your journey from potentially considering retail to now um being a maths teacher but like you said I really like your ambition as well because you mm -hmm. mentioned at the start you know what yeah this is where I'm starting off I'm loving it I'm enjoying it but you're yeah. still just to say you know I can work internationally um mm -hmm. and still learning on the side so honestly I toodles to you um, and really excited because like I just think my teachers always believed in me yeah still communicate that to them to this day so it's amazing what the teacher's belief in you as a student has an impact mm -hmm. on you for the rest of your life because even though I didn't get the A-level results I wanted yeah. I knew that my teachers believed that I'd be successful in whatever I did so mm -hmm. imagine now having like a black woman um, as a teacher who's good at teaching who's doing mm -hmm. mathematics like it's unbelievable the influence you'll have on the on the children that you're going to teach so you went for purpose rather than you went for purpose and passion um, yeah. rather than money which is incredible I guess yeah and it's also like the fact that I'm young as well like something that I've gotten from kids is like they feel like they could relate and mm -hmm. it's literally because like if they make a joke like well I missed did you see this in the video I'll be like yeah I did that was hilarious and it's like you know like when you're still in them bonds and like that's mm -hmm. the stuff they'll for, not mm -hmm. like random how many hearts the world has. I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> On that note, how do you establish the, because you're quite young and yeah. maybe some of the students you're teaching are A-level students and GCSE students and 16 and 17 year olds, how do you establish that teacher-student boundary relating to them but also ensuring that they don't take the piss and they, they can banter with you but you're also serious, you have to get the work done? Yeah. Um, I literally feel like it's number one making sure all your rules and routines are it's almost established from the beginning mm -hmm. like they know when uh -huh. you come into this classroom this is mm -hmm. what your book needs to be like this is what i expect from you guys mm -hmm. this is what like basically like this is how this class is going to be but i always say to them like during the lesson as well like i don't mind you talking to yourself because i myself know that maths mm -hmm. is not the interesting mm -hmm. subject there is so I don't mind you guys talking, but as long as you do your work, mm -hmm. then, then we can have like, an enjoyable lesson. But then there's also times when it's like, I know that I can go into a lesson and be like, yeah, this is what you have to do, do it. And then I can then go like, okay. And then someone will ask me like, oh, did you see this on Netflix? And we can go on a whole other conversation. But then as soon as I clap my hands or I just stare at them, you know, like, yeah, it's time to like refocus. So it's literally just about establishing, like, this is how I am, this is how this class is going to be, right well, on the get-go. Okay, well, interesting. Yeah. Great. Um, also, so what do you enjoy about teaching? If I'm being honest, it's like 
as much as the lesson can be annoying, it's literally the kids. Because mm-hmm. you have to remember that this is right. essentially why I'm in this role. I'm not doing it for me because mm-hmm. I'm not getting anything mm-hmm. out of this. It's literally me trying to educate you. Mm-hmm. So it's like, as long as I know that they're essentially like mm-hmm. reaching the goals, mm-hmm. then that's when I'm feeling happiest. If I know that someone's stuck and they, you can see it, I'm going to be upset and I'm thinking like, well, what can I do to like help them get these grades? What can I do? What extra can I do? How can I make this lesson more enjoyable? But at the same time, like in a way for them, they can still learn from it. Mm. So it's literally the kids mm. like that's number one. And then also it's like the other thing I like is just the day in general and mm. the environment. I mean, because the school day, 8.30 to 3.15. Mm-hmm. Anything other than that is your own volunteering, basically. Like, if I want to stay back five hours, well, not five hours, but if I want to stay back, like, two hours to make sure mm-hmm. everything's ticked off, then that's my own time I'm giving. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if I will need to leave at 3.15, I know no one's going to stop me mm-hmm. or no one's going to talk about it. But at the same time, it's like just having that flexibility, like, I can live my life, but then at the same time, I do have that room to stay behind and also get everything down. So that's another thing. And then also the school I'm in now and just the uni I'm in as well, it's like everyone's just so supportive. That's so so I can live and like with, it, to me it might be the dumbest question, but to them, they probably heard it like how many times already. So they're always willing to help, always willing to show me new things, resources and everything. because essentially they know that if it's going to help the kids then they want to make sure the kids do well so yeah and also what i found is that teachers want to see other teachers win oh that's so 100 percent. they'll do anything to make sure like they're like just comfortable and just ready to take on the class basically that's yeah i just had a question Um, how do you engage like your least engaged student because in the class I was one of them I'd put my hand up I'd do chatty patty I yeah. was a class character but then you always get the quiet ones who don't really say much so how do you engage with those students and how do you make them feel comfortable in your lessons yeah do you know what it is it's like it, let's say the quieter students for example like if I know that they have some sort of I've been seeing this a lot some sort of like anxiety and they don't up their hand then I will not force them to and but when I walk around I'll go to them and be like are you okay is there anything you need help on blah 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 but then also if I do see their hand go up I'm picking them because you never you never see them put their hand up mm-hmm. so it's like taking advantage of this opportunity right now mm-hmm. but then it's also like the ones that are distracted it's literally you just got to set them small goals like yeah if you get up to here that'll be fine or get up to here and then we can go through the next one together or let's say someone's confused you do the first two questions with them and then after that um you make them try it for themselves you'd be like try this question they walk back around and they come back to them saying like, okay so how did we get on it's just like those small stepping stones to like make sure that they know that you want them to understand mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. but i think it's just those small goals like okay try reach this or if I'm distracted and I want to go to it, right, finish this question and you can go. It's stuff like that. So, but then also not being afraid to like be like, if you don't finish it, you're staying off to school to do it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> simple. <laughs> no, simple. Like, that's literally how it is. What are the challenges you face being a teacher? Um, I can't lie. Most recently, it's been obviously like the pandemic mm-hmm. i know everyone's been mm-hmm. through their troubles but it's like before i always used to seem home as mm-hmm. home school is school school mm-hmm. is work mm-hmm. so uni and even uni is uni so now it's like we're all at home and it's gotten to a point where my room is now my office but it's still meant to be my my safe space mm-hmm. like, it, it doesn't go almost it's like I always thought, like, whatever work I have to do, I'll finish it at school. So when I come home, I have nothing else. I can just chill, get on my day. But then it's like, when I'm stuck in lectures and I'm looking at my bed over there thinking, 
but then I have to be focused and then I'm looking at the kids and everything so it's like it's literally just that divide as well but then the challenges as well I would say getting through the difficult lessons yeah. in a way mm -hmm. like, yeah. not all of them are smooth running you're gonna have some that will make you want to like rip your hair out mm. but it's literally mm. just there's some phrase I can't remember but it's like starting a new day fresh mm -hmm. like, you can't you have to remember like these kids are like 11 to 16 mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. like it probably won't even mean anything to them mm -hmm. so you can't now bring that energy into a new mm -hmm. class mm -hmm. so it's like remembering and like just managing your time as well mm -hmm. like, so you mm -hmm. know that you're prepared for a new day and whatever could like just interrupt it and just getting right back on track with it that's incredible um could you talk us through your academic journey so from GCSEs to A levels and what university you went to and then after that um explain the main differences between maths at uni and maths in A levels yeah sure so um GCSEs I done it it was a school in like Clapham all girls Catholic <laughs> <laughs> I felt like it was, it was definitely like a highlight of my life but well, my GCSEs, I done, well, you know the cool subjects like maths, English, mm -hmm. science. Then I also done like French, history, textiles, because mm -hmm. they done that uh -huh. feedback thing and I was chosen for it, which I hated because I wanted to do like business, IT and everything. But yeah. that's why I done textiles. And yeah, done that, happy with my grades. Then I stayed at the sixth form that was in my school. Because on one hand, it was like, as much as I'd really like to go explore, mm -hmm. I know the, you know, the yeah. teachers, the teachers know yeah. me, they know my learning style, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make sense to leave. And I know that whatever I do, I will get accepted on. Mm -hmm. So it's like none mm -hmm. of that whole long application process. Yeah. So yeah. A-levels are done maths, business and sociology. Mm -hmm. and that was mm -hmm. cool. It was fun. Again, like, again, another highlight. But then uni I so I studied maths accounting and finance at the University of Kent okay, okay. and yeah that that was a that was an interesting one it's like it's, I love the uni experience but university mm. itself oh. yeah it was not easy <laughs> it wasn't easy at all but we thank god we got through it yeah that's all like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. my degree stares at me every day and I look at it like yeah I went through hell to get <laughs> But and now I am at University of Rio. Oh my gosh, University of Roehampton doing secondary maths. So wow, yeah. wow. What did you yeah. say? A levels again? Sorry. A levels are um, maths, business, and sociology. Oh, maths, business, oh, maths. and sociology. It's interesting. Yeah. So you chose maths. Why not business and? Uh, oh, you did maths, maths and accounting at uni. So I guess the maths yeah. and business went went down that route but how come sociology said no um you know what sociology I chose sociology as like one of those subjects where I sort of wanted to know how society works mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah? mm -hmm. like I wanted to know how like, other people think and also it looked like it looked enjoyable and as much as they say like oh just because your friends are, are doing it you should mm -hmm. but at the same time but at the same time, it wasn't just because my friends was there. That was the plus. It was literally just knowing like how different systems work mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. as well, which is really why I was brought to it. Because if I'm being honest, I hate essays, mm -hmm. but I didn't mm -hmm. mind my sociology ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was literally just like a kind of filler subject. Wow. So, Where do you wow. see yourself in five years? In five years? Yeah. So right now I've got two paths. <laughs> so one path is literally me completing this uni year, this first year, and then I think like gaining probably two more years experience. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm out yeah, yeah. to a different country for like two years as well. So like that's that five. <laughs> but then my other five is literally staying in London, um, completing the uni year, and then just another year and then hopefully by the end of that five years being in a more senior leadership position wow because 
definitely wow. I want to like be a head teacher or even a governor wow. but it's like I can't get there without doing all of these yeah you need to know like, what's going on in the school like, yeah so like something like a head of department or like yeah, definitely yeah you know, like that would be it ideally where I'd want to be in five years wow so yeah which country wow. would yeah. you dream of working if you had the opportunity? Um, right now it's looking like a little bit of Singapore, a little bit of Dubai. Okay, I see that. I see. Well, I mean, yeah. But it's literally like they pay for your accommodation, travels, and everything. So it's like either one is good. But I would think it just comes down to like what's their English like in both subjects, like. To get the schools, just the country itself, and yeah. what's that like? As well? yeah, I'm sure, you're definitely so, yeah. um either or, but I have a feeling that something completely out of what you <laughs> plan is going to happen that you never expected. Hundred <laughs> percent. That's what I'm saying. Hopefully, but or something yeah. better <laughs> comes up that you weren't expecting. Exactly. Exactly. We never know. We actually never know. But um, you had one more question. A levels and uni. Yeah, what's maths. the difference between A level and uni maths? Yeah. So I see A level maths is like it's sort of like an extension from GCSE maths mm-hmm. in a yeah. very weird way because mm-hmm. it's like you're all using everything you learn in GCSEs, mm-hmm. but it's just it's just being developed mm-hmm. and you're doing more steps and more topics and everything. Yeah. So in the sense is like it's really structured like that. Mm-hmm. However, with um, uni now, it's literally like a whole different ball game. You're on your own. If you don't have the people in your course, you'll actually suffer. I can't even lie. Like, they helped me so much. Yeah. And, yeah, like, literally, I was in, like, three different group chats mm-hmm. with three different things. Mm-hmm. But it was always popping off. Mm-hmm. So that's that. And also, it's just that just the support as well you get and all the materials given to you is so much different because at school you're still in school you're still in college or you're still in sixth form college Mm -hmm. so you still have the support of your teachers Mm -hmm. but then when you're now in uni Mm -hmm. there's only one lecture for like two three hundred people yeah so you don't get the same with Mm -hmm. um, support Mm -hmm. and the content is just harder (laughs) so much harder you you hardly see numbers anymore (laughs) Honestly, you hard, even hardly see letters. It's all symbols. So it's like proofs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, so yeah, it's just much more harder, much less support. I think if you I studied think- a STEM subject and you're a STEM degree, babe, mm-hmm. um, I realised that you can't get throughout your degree without your course mates. It's not. It's not possible. Like. If- if you're a proper STEM babe, I'm talking science, technology, engineering, and mathematics degree babe, you can't. There, you cannot get through your degree. With your it's not possible. You have to know your classmates, at least half of them on a first name basis. If not, yeah. I don't know for you to be honest. Hundred percent, hundred percent. No, I totally agree. It's a, it's very. It's because I feel like with STEM subjects, they're very collaborative, or it's more like. There's because there's different areas. There's all there's someone who's an expert in that area, but you'll be an expert in another area, and it's like sharing of ideas and thoughts and processes. And yeah, yeah no, I agree. As a STEM babe, now nah, you, you know, an advice I would give for anyone who's considering to do a STEM subject: make friends with the people on your course, because if not, I don't know. <laughs> and make your lecturers know you. Of course, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that genuine, yeah that was that's another thing as well like for me I made sure I could I probably could name 90% of the students on my course at the time not now yeah. um, I'm sure most of the people on my course knew who I was yeah um, sat at the front put my hand up asked questions I didn't I didn't care because yeah. at the end of the day I wanted my degree and at the end of the day when you look for jobs and stuff mm-hmm. they're the ones who are going to reference you and if they don't know you then how exactly. are they going to talk about you exactly. um, but 
yeah that's that's interesting that's really interesting but um for now that's all the questions i have thank you thank so you. much miss williams for agreeing to be on my channel no um problem. i wish you the best in your career i really wish you continue to inspire the young children and look at you glistening and glowing and having your nails did in your eyebrows done like, like, like come on that sleigh like come on man educated but pretty what oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i'm done i'm done i'm done because imagine if oh, i was man. younger and i saw like a babe as a teacher i'd be like yeah. wow like if she can do i can do too what yeah, i can yeah. do maths at uni so thank yeah you. no keep shining and keep doing you thank you no thank you so much for like having me here as well no i've no actually enjoyed it <laughs> i really enjoyed it as well. yeah but all right you. guys if you like this video and you'd like me to bring on more fantastic guests like the one herself miss williams then make sure you like subscribe share and comment and i'll be back with another video bye